Hello, everyone. I'm sure many of you are hungry now, but please bear with me for the next 10, 15 minutes. Uh, my name is Kadir Akdemir. I am a postdoctoral fellow in Linda Chin's lab. And first off, I would like to thank the organizers to give me the op opportunity to present our work about understanding the evolution of the epigenome in melanoma progression. So melanoma cells can exhibit plastic behavior. And in this study, authors have shown that upon immunotherapy, melanoma cells can go to reversible de-differentiation process, which results in the resistance to the therapy and the tumor growth. The fact that this cellular state change is reversible suggests an underlying epigenetic component of this uh, therapy resistance. And recently, several gurus, groups have re-emphasized the role of uh, epigenomic changes in the human malignancies, such as the case of loss of 5-hydroxymethylcytosine in melanoma or H3K4 monomethylation signatures in human colon cancer. And AACR Cancer Epigenome Task Force recommends establishment of uh, international cancer epigenome project to map a defined number of cancer epigenomes that might help us to develop a better uh, therapeutic uh, strategies. So the overarching question in this project is how does epigenome contribute to melanoma progression? And we would like to understand what changes on chromatin when the normal melanocytes became primary uh, melanoma and from primary melanoma to metastatic melanoma. So first we start with the cell line system. And the cell line system first uh, initially developed by David Fisher's lab, where they immortalized the uh, primary human melanocytes with TET overexpression as well as P3 double negative CDK4 uh, mutation and BRFV600 mutation. However, these alterations were not enough to in, uh, uh, produce uh, tumors in mouse, so we call them non-tumorigenic. And when we add P10 knockdown in addition to these alterations, as you can see that there's a drastic uh, formation of the tumor in mouse. And, but we need to overexpress CMAT to get the metastatic tumors in the, in the mouse. So we call this SHP10 level as pro-tumorigenic and SHP10 SH CMAT, uh, CMAT overexpression as metastatic. So initially we focus on the changes happening from non-tumorigenic to pro-tumorigenic cell lines. And we are utilizing a method called high throughput chip sequencing, which is initially developed by Ido Amit in the, by then at the Avi Vragev's lab at the Broad Institute, which helps you to parallelize the chip uh, chipping uh, protocol. And currently we can uh, chip uh, all ENCODE validated antibodies for a given cell type. So this is our initial results. When we compare the pro epigenome to the non tumorigenic epigenome, but we observe a global loss of histone acetylations, as you can see for different acetylation marks. And these changes are generally happening around the transcription start site of the genes that, are, that can be associated with apoptosis, DNA replication, or cell cycle. And more interestingly, when we check the deacetylated enhanced regions, the motifs that we found was were putative tumor suppressors such as FOXO3 or RANKS1. And what we think is going on is that pre-existing chromatin landscape is affecting the binding of these tumor suppressors and thereby affecting their regulatory functions. So if the chromatin is highly acetylated, these transcription factors can bind and affect the gene regulation. However, the, the, low is, the chromatin is low acetylated, then these transcription factors cannot bind effectively. And uh, there's a supporting evidence coming from a re recent publication where the authors show that initial enhancer marks are uh, influential for the FOXO3 binding and downstream regulation. So next we switch our focus from the cell line data and we would like to know what is happening from normal melanocyte to melanoma tumors. For this purpose, we acquired 10 melanoma tumor samples that is profiled by the TCGA project. And we had to optimize our HD chip method to use a small number of cells. 
as the tissue source was finite. So currently we can chip the, a, an antibody for 1,000 to 10,000 cells. And so far we have profiled 36 histone marks, two forms of RNA polymerase, three histone variants, and genomic insulator CTCF for eight tumor samples, and so generated six billion reads. And we think this is the biggest cancer histone histomodification histo modification data set. But we are still in the data production stage. As you can see, for certain acetylation, cert certain marks, we are missing enough coverage for the certain tumors. So the, the important question that we would like to know, answer is that which developmental pathways are hijacked during melanomogenesis? And the idea came from a recent cell paper from uh, John Stem Group at University of Washington where they studied the DNA's hypersensitive sites at the human cells. DNA hypersensitivity assay is a way to measure the regulatory regions in a given cell type. And these sites are generally in a good concordance with the active histone marks. So the overall message from this paper is that compared to the normal counterparts, the cancer cells acquire a certain amount of regulatory regions, and many of these regions are either, either overlapping with the sites that were active at embryonic stem cells, or they are active in the different lineages. So the take home message is new oncogenic sites that are, that are actually older developmental pathways, and cancer cells do not reinvent the wheel every time. They use the already existing arsenal of the regulatory site. So then we would like to compare the changes happening from normal melanocytes to melanoma tumors, the one that in the normal human development from embryonic stem cells to precursor cells and the fetal or adult tissue. And for this purpose, we are using data coming from a, another NIH-funded project, Roadmap Epigenomics, where they profiled 127 different human body cell types. And here I am showing an initial result for the H3K4 monometylation site evolution. And these results are overlapping with the, what is observed for the DNAs data. Once, when we look to the sites that are obtained in melanoma compared to the melanocytes, 24% of these sites were active at the embryonic stem cells, and 70% were active in the different lineages. Only 6% are novel or unknown. Here I am showing a, an example site that is gaining some K4 monometylation for certain tumors, melanoma tumors. And when you check the DNA signal, you can see this site were open in different uh, cell types. And just to be sure this, this signal is not coming from the bulk tissue with the different cell types, I profile the DNA's hypersensitivity coming from melanoma or melanoma, melanocyte cell lines. And the sites gain H3K4 monometylation in melanoma tumors exhibit a very high DNA signal in melanoma, but not in melanocytes. Another evidence is that when we look at another region that gained K4 monometylation in melanoma, what we observe is that in addition to the, hum the modest increase for DNAs, what we also observe a binding site gaining of MITF, lineage specific master regulator, in melanoma, nothing in melanocytes. So that suggests these gain sites are somewhat functional for the melanoma genesis. And lastly, what we would like to also do is the, to check, to annotate the NAND coding variant in, uh, in cancer genome by integrating our epigenomic data sets. Uh, given that the third promoter mutations have been recently reported, I think we are just scratching the surface for the non-coding uh, mutation functionality. And first we focus on the GVAS locations. FTO gene GVAS has been identified for over 12,000 melanoma patients compared to the 55,000 controls. And first I am showing you the, our cell line data. As you can see in our proteomogenic cell lines, we are losing the active histone marks. And we also check the these sites for our human tumor data, and you can see the similar trend. In normal melanocytes, we have a scrunt signal for H3K27 acetylation. In melanoma cells, this signal is gone, as well as you can see this DNA's hypersensitivity signal is also going 
down in melanos melanoma cells and the cells are losing their MITF binding site. So as a summary, what we think is that understanding the epigenome in the human cancers, in this case melanoma, could help us to understand where to target or what the, the mutations to, to prioritize and the, can improve the therapeutic the strategies. With that, I would like to thank my mentor, Dr. Linda Chin, and take a moment to thank a close collaborator and a good friend, Kunal Rai, who is doing the, all the chips in this project, as well as uh, Emily Kyung, with all the lab members, the computational group in our development, and the rest of the collaborators. With that, I would like to thank all of you for your time and patience. I will answer any questions. So is this a TCGA-funded project, or is this outside of the TCGA? So this is outside. Okay, and where are you going to make the uh, sequencing results available? Um, so we are still in the data production stage, and we are doing the QCs just to be sure that whatever we are producing is the real tumor samples. But once we have the uh, good quality data, we will planning to do the data available. Okay, thank you very much. So I th this concludes the uh, morning session. Um, just housekeeping, it looks like we have lunch until uh, 2 o'clock, and then the poster session starts, and then session 5 starts at 3 o'clock in this room.